Hi, this is Mr. Biotech of SkinYourScreen.com with a three-part tutorial on creating glassy shapes and bevels. We're going to create a shape like this in part one. Part two, we're going to stick a dent on it like it got bumped in a car accident. And then we're going to, in part three of this, create a gem over it to add some additional detail. So let's get started making this thing. To do that, you'll need Photoshop. I'm using version CS3, although the layer styles will apply to anything, uh, or any previous version, down to 6.0. I'm going to create a new file and make it 600 pixels by 600 pixels at a resolution of 72 dpi with a transparent background. I'm going to also shrink this down to about 50% view so that we can see the whole thing. And we're going to be trying to use vectors for this as much as possible uh, as opposed to using painted shapes or, or fills of any type. So I'm going to select the ellipse tool and up here make sure this little guy is clicked before you proceed just in case and we're going to set the, the size of this shape to, I'm, I'm going to use 400 pixels by 300 pixels, you can use what you like, um, and I'm just going to select a color here that's kind of a, a neutral uh, brownish kind of gray color, and I'm just going to draw my ellipse right in the middle, there we go. Not much to look at yet. Let's uh, double click on the layer to start applying some layer styles. Uh, the thing that I want the most is going to be a bevel, so in order to render like Photoshop's stock bevels really suck. So let's tweak it a bit. I'm going to change the angle on this to 110 degrees and change the altitude to 63 degrees. Drop the depth to something like 50, 60 percent, up the size somewhere around 100 something pixels. And uh, so that's that's how it's looking right now. Not too thrilling yet. I'm going to add a contour, make it a half round contour, and that's our effect. So that's pretty believable. Now, we're actually going to use multiple layers to render our final effect. So I'm going to go back to that bevel and select down and reduce the screen opacity to about 40%, I think is a good number. Uh, so that's what we got. We're actually going to use another layer to render uh, a, a much more resolute shine on the top. So like light is coming down from this direction and so this would be the reflection. So I'm going to add an inner glow, but we're going to tweak it. Instead of using a, uh, a bright glow, we're going to switch to black on the inside and set the mode to multiply. So we're going to make it darker on the interior. And I'm going to up the size on that. Let's go somewhere around 30-something pixels and drop the opacity a little bit. Yeah, about 50% looks good. I'm also going to add an outer glow, but instead of doing a light glow, again, I'm going to do dark colors here. This will increase our illusion of depth by making it look like it's sticking off the uh, the background a little bit. We can do the same thing with a drop shadow. Often I use both of them in conjunction with one another to render uh, a very realistic offset effect, like it's kind of floating above that background. Uh, it's more or less to user taste. Um, I'm also going to add a pattern to this. So I want something that's got a, a nice kind of brush metal look. That's a little bit too strong, so I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay and also add a gradient. And I'm going to make this gradient go the same direction as our angle of light that we set for our bevel. So that's 110 degrees. And that's really, really strong. So I'm going to also set the mode on that to overlay. So this is our completed base layer. I'm going to double click the name here and just call it base. Now to proceed, we're going to click on this layer, make sure it's selected, and then click and drag it to this little button to, to create a duplicate of it. And then if we go to Layer, uh, Layer Styles, I'm going to clear, well, I'll come back. So Layer Style, and then Clear Layer Style. So now we've got a gray shape. I'm going to drop the fill opacity to zero. Seems kind of strange. Mr. Biotech, why are you getting rid of the uh, the fill content? Well, we just want to use this layer for its layer style. So double clicking on the layer, we're going to get here. And I'm going to do kind of a similar thing to what I did with the bevel before. Adding a bevel, adding a half round contour. The bevel, so we already set these angles, or angles previously. Uh, this time I'm going to reduce the depth to about maybe 41. Let's make it 31% and up the size on it pretty substantially. So now we've got a top shine. This is what we're rendering right now. And I'm just going to keep tweaking it using the size until I get it where I want. And I think that's pretty good right there. So I'm going to OK that. So we're coming right along nicely with this. This is looking like a three-dimensional glassy shape. I'm going to take it a step farther. 
and create another duplicate of this layer by dragging it to that new layer button. And again, I'm going to go to Layer, Layer Styles, and then Clear Layer Style. And I'm going to change the color. So first I'm going to reverse this. So I've got a white color selected here. I'm just going to select that. So I've got a white. Now I'm going to go to my Path Selection tool, click on that shape, and do a transform on it. Transform Path. I'm going to do some scaling. So I've got my bounding box. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and the Shift key, or Option, on a Mac, and just drag that around. This has the effect of maintaining the aspect ratio, but it also keeps it centered. And I'm going to reduce that so it's approximately at 96% in both uh, angles, and then hit Return to accept it. And uh, so now I'm going to click it, and then Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. And this is all within the same layer. So if I use my path selection tool, I can click. And since I copied, there's actually two of these guys now. And up here in the top, when the path selection tool is selected, I'm going to change this shape so that it intersects with the other. So now the only place where we see the white of this layer is here, where the two shapes intersect one with another. I'm also going to do a transform on this again. So scale it. And I just want to increase it a little bit. Uh, a little bit. I'm holding, again, Alt or Option and Shift, and just expanding it a little bit, and hitting Return to Accept. And now I'm going to double-click this layer to edit its layer styles, reduce its fill opacity to zero, like we did previously, and stick on a gradient. And in this case, I want a gradient that goes from white to black, or from white to transparent. Uh, that's how that's going to look. I want that to be reversed. So we've got white light coming here. It's a little bit strong. I'm going to change its mode to screen and reduce the opacity to maybe, uh, well, let's try that. Let's see how that looks. So 35%. And I'm going to click out here to deselect. And we have kind of a nice hard shine there. And we can tweak the angle on it. So this has been part one. On part two, I'm going to show you how to add a dimple to this, looking like somebody punched it right in the middle. And try to do that with vectors as much as we can. Uh, so we can get a realistic dent in here, and we're going to fill in part of that dent with another gem type shape so that we have a very realistic looking thing. So this is uh, Mr. Biotech with part one of a three-part tutorial on making glassy insets for SkinYourScreen.com.